kicking off the Rocket Jeans Challenge. This is the third year that we've done this. Um, this is our biggest group. We've got 25 signed up, so um, it should be a good one. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight is five tips to transform your bodies. Um, and this is all stuff we've kind of been preaching to you throughout your workouts, but um, just kind of reinforce some things, maybe some tips that you've forgotten or missed or anything like that. So it's good kind of what we're going to go through. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about how the Rocket Jeans Challenge works and um, some of the group workouts that we're going to be doing and the dates where we'll be trying on jeans and everything like that. Then we'll answer some questions and stuff at the end. So first thing, I was going to do a PowerPoint presentation, but I couldn't find the projector and I didn't get a chance to go by one. So I was going to show a little clip of what we do, but you all know what we do because everyone here is members. So we'll skip over that one. So on the next page, the first thing is it all starts with nutrition. Um, nutrition is roughly 80% of your results. And if you're eating bad, it's very, very hard to um, see the results you're looking for. It's hard to out-exercise that, um, with no matter how much exercise you do. Because you can always eat more than you can burn off, unfortunately. So with nutrition, we have a few rules that we like everybody to try to follow. Um, again, somewhere 80, 90% of the time you're following these rules. We don't expect you to be perfect. If you try to be perfect, you end up setting yourself up for failure. Um, and you know, then you get frustrated, and you give up, and leave it for a few months, and then come back. So, um, so the first thing is we want to stay away from processed foods. This is probably the best thing that you can do nutritionally um, for yourself right off the get-go. Is start eating more real foods, getting away from anything that's in a box, in a, in a wrapper, especially the processed uh, starches and grains and things like that, and um, the processed and kind of modified fats like the um, margarines and Crisco's and fake butters and stuff like that. Um, from there, we like everybody to eat some meat in their diet. If you are um, on a vegetarian diet, that, that's fine, you can work with that. Um, but we just like to have, have people eating meat because what happens if you're not eating meat, you tend to make those calories up through starchy carbohydrates. If you're eating carbohydrates, it tends to make you want to, your body want to store some fat. So we try to um, fill those calories in by eating meat. Um, really any type of meat is fine um, for you. Um, we'd rather see grass-fed, um, organic type meats are gonna have okay. the hormones and the antibiotics and stuff that are helpful in a lot of these animals. Um, but if you are having conventional meat, if you trim the fat off, that's gonna get rid of a good chunk of that because that's where most of that stuff gets stored. Um, the next thing is we wanna eat vegetables. As many vegetables as you possibly can eat in huge servings, basically. Um, you can't, you're not going to get fat on eating vegetables. You really can't overeat vegetables. You, know, you get full when you're sick. So if you need to put a little bit of butter on them to flavor them, that's fine. Just make sure you're using real butter and they're not soaked in that. Um, you can also put you know, some olive oil, some things like that on them. Um, we really like um, lately a lot of coconut oils on stuff because it gives it a flavor, especially with fishes and things like that, even into the vegetables. Um, Next thing we want to focus on eating is fruits. We want to limit these somewhere to two to three servings a day of the fruits because again, it is a sugar, um, but it's a natural sugar and our body is going to handle that much better than a tablespoon of sugar that is in a donut or something like that. There's a lot more than a tablespoon in a donut. <laughs> but um, just to give you a, an idea there. Um, so we look at those two to three times um, a day with fat. Then the next one, um, and probably the biggest one for fat loss, is trying to totally avoid starches and um, sugars. And this is your grains, your um, legumes, stuff like that. And the main reason for this is when you eat 
eat a carbohydrate or eat a sugar, it triggers insulin in your body. When insulin is triggered, that then triggers fat storage. So if we can control insulin, we can control fat storage there. So that's why we say to limit the fruits a little bit because you're getting a little bit of sugar that's coming in, and even though it's natural, it's still sugar. And um, that's gonna trigger insulin, which is gonna trigger the fat storage. Um, that being said, you're gonna have some carbohydrate in your diet. There's gonna be some grains and stuff like that. The best choices for that are sweet potatoes because they're not quite as starchy as white potato and they're a little bit more related to carrots and squash and things like that. Um, and then also quinoa because it's technically not, it's not a grain, it's a different type of plant um, that's more closely related to common weeds. But um, that's the family that it falls into, so it's not a grain. And um, quinoa. It's really good. Um, it's like a little circular thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. It's kind of chewy. It looks like this, like bulgur wheat. If you've ever made like tabbouleh, but doesn't it come in like a grain box? It does come in a grain. Yeah. 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 And yeah, and, and it's it's good. Yeah. Who knows what it looks like? Like. Yeah. And the other one that's good is wild rice, because wild rice is more related to your body. Uh, plants like um, seaweed and stuff like that than it is it's close more closely related to that than it is to a grain. So while those three are still a starch, they don't have all the properties of grains and stuff, so they're not as starchy. Um, and with this, yes, like, like you're, they're beans. Beans. Like um, so you don't want to eat beans. keep them in moderation. Most people don't digest them very well, so they create a lot of bloating and, and stuff like that. Um, if you if you do and they are starchy, that's the other thing. Um, if if you eat them and you feel good with them, keep them kind of in moderation. Same can be said for dairy. If you eat dairy and you feel good on it, it's okay. If you eat dairy and it makes you sick, don't eat dairy. Same thing with the uh, the meats and stuff like that. But are okay? They're the same, they're in that category. That's enough that's yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. So stay away from that? Keep them in, in moderation, yeah. You don't want to eat too, too many of them. What a lot of people start doing, especially when you get into like the vegetarian diets, they start eating them because they need to get the proteins through these these sources and stuff. And you end up getting that high carbohydrate content that it makes it a little harder to, to lose fat. Yes? What about, I, I don't understand the quinoa. Doesn't that have a high carb? It does, but it doesn't have the same properties. Because of the protein? It, yeah, so you're, you did want to limit it, but you don't want to, you know, it, it's better than if you're eating, like, say, whole wheat pasta or something like that, or oats or something like that. So, like, like that. once a day, quinoa. I'll give you that, yeah. And it's one of those things you just have to see. Some people do very well with it. Other people, it's a sticking point for them. So everybody's going to be a little bit different with, with things like this. So it's a thing where you kind of try it, see how you're going. If we're not seeing the result we want, maybe... And then we're eating a lot of that, we will pull some of that away. But if you air, you want to air the quinoa, basically. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, the next thing that we want to focus on is we want to eat some fat beef today. Um, we've gotten very much programmed as a society to everything's got to be fat free. Totally stay away from fat. It's the you know, evil thing for your body. And that's not necessarily true. It, fat doesn't. Just because you're eating fat, it doesn't get turned into and stored automatically into fat on your body. Carbohydrates, that's usually where they want to go. Um, the fat's going to give you, it, it's a higher cal calorie content, but it's going to give you um, also some energy through the day, and it's also going to help hold you over and keep you feeling full longer. Um, when you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, especially say for cereal, you have a bowl of um, granola or whole wheat cereal. Most people will eat that, and then an hour, hour and a half later, they're just starving again. So you go, you eat something more, and if it's starchy, it just keeps continuing that. Where if you have, at breakfast, so you have maybe two, three eggs, um, maybe even a couple strips of real bacon in there, and a couple slices of avocado, that's gonna hold you for probably four hours. 
so you're going to feel good. And what will end up happening at the end of the day, the total calorie content that you ate is going to be lower than if you keep triggering yourself to be hungry and you're not triggering insulin and all the sugars and stuff in your body. Um, and then the last thing is make sure you're drinking water throughout the day. We try not to um, drink a lot of um, our calories. One of the exceptions would be in the recovery shakes because we do want those nutrients to come in and repair the muscle tissue that's in our bodies. When we work out, we break some of the muscle tissue down, our body's looking for nutrients to build and repair them. If nothing comes in immediately to your body, it's gonna go looking, it's gonna look for this. And it's not gonna take it from fat, unfortunately, like we would love it to. It's gonna take it from muscle tissue that's undisturbed, break that down to fix what was disturbed over here. That slows your metabolism down, it drops your total body muscle mass down, which kind of puts you back in that dip that we're trying to, to get out to keep your metabolism going, keep your body burning fat. Um, so water's good. One to two cups of coffee a day is good. Um, if you did three, it, that's okay too. It's when you're drinking a whole pot or two. You know, then you're gonna have trouble sleeping, and stuff like that. Um, green tea, herbal teas are fine. Um, big things you wanna stay away from, sodas. You wanna stay away from lattes, alcohol a little bit. I know everybody's um, and in moderation, you can a little bit, but it uh, alcohol does kind of wreak havoc on the body a little bit, especially when we're trying to get rid of fat. So, um, seven calories per gram in alcohol. Where protein and carbs only have four um, calories, and fat has nine, so it's almost as high as fat. And the downside to alcohol is it burns very, very efficiently for an energy source in your body. Your body burns all of that. Like when there's alcohol in your system, it only burns that because it burns so easily. So you're not burning any fat at all when that, until that's all out of there. So that's that's the big thing is it shuts down um, it shuts down fat burning basically. There's also some evidence that um, when you're drinking it, it shuts down um, like testosterone production and also some of those hormones that help us to lose fat as well. Especially if we drink and then we go to sleep. We don't get we don't get into that deep sleep. We get all the hormones and all that stuff going along, so that can affect you throughout the, the day. That one too. Um, so it's basically nutrition. Um, they said try to follow those 80 to 90 percent of the time. Um, you know, everybody's going to eat desserts. Everybody's going to have some drinks and eat some processed stuff. And you know that that's fine. Let's just you know, try to keep it 80, 90 percent, especially these next eight weeks. Let's try to do better than what you're currently doing now. That's what is going to get you all into your genes. Um, so the next tip to kind of transform your body is lift heavy things, and we want we don't want to be lifting, I would say, big dumbbells or anything like that. We want heavy weight to stress all the muscles in the body, and the heavier that weight is, the more muscle recruitment that is involved. When we have like a, say five pound weight, your body's only gonna send enough energy and fire enough muscles, uh, muscle fibers to lift that five pound weight. When we bump that up to, to 10 pounds, we um, fire some more muscle fibers, more calories are burned. Bump that up to all the way up to 20, 25, you know, closer to what your max is, we're getting full muscle recruitment we're getting more um, calories burned, we're getting the metabolism stimulated more, and we're really putting a, a, a um, stress on the, the body to get, get that stuff going. So we want to lift heavy, but we don't want to lift so heavy that our form is bad. We don't want to be getting hurt or say we're doing a deadlift. We don't want to be picking up with our back around the head and stuff like that. We want to still have good form. So that heavy is kind of a relative term. And it's, you know, what's heavy for one person may be light for another. Um, next tip is no cardio without intensity. And basically, what we mean by that is we don't want to just go go out and just take a nice, easy stroll through the park. Um, you know, while that's enjoyable and stuff, that that's great. You know, if you take walks in your neighborhoods with your friends, kind of talk and relax and stuff, use that as like a de-stress type thing. That's not going to get us into, a, into the fat loss zone that we're looking for. 
Um, as far as the fat burning zone goes, it really doesn't exist. Um, people used to, they used to think it did kind of in the late 80s and 90s, and it works well for treadmill cells because they put that on the thing <laughs> on there and you know, go. Um, right now, you guys are all in the fat burning zone because you're sitting and that's what you're using for your primary fuel right now. And you get up and start moving, you start using uh, glycogen, the blood sugar, stuff like that. But it's the intensity that gets the fat to come off. The harder we're able to work in e each session, the more stimulus we put onto the body that not necessarily in that workout, we maybe didn't burn a lot of fat. It's what we're looking in the, in the hours afterwards, kind of as known as an afterburn effect, where we're burning tons of, tons of calories in the next it's about 36 hours and your metabolism is in an elevated state after a resistance training uh, workout. So that's kind of why we say no cardio without intensity. We want that muscular stimulation. We want, you know, we want that on the body there. Um, so, the next one here is train functionally. This is what's going to really carry over into your day-to-day -day lives. Because it's, it's about getting into your genes and you know, looking, looking good and all, being happy and comfortable and all that stuff. And that's great, but if you can't move or do anything or you're you know, moving a son or daughter into college or rearranging your house and you're lifting stuff and you're getting hurt doing that or you can't do that or you're getting exhausted to carry stuff up and down. That's not necessarily what we want things that are going to make our life easier and make things easier to do. So that's what we talk about training functionally and um, doing things with, with the ropes to get that heart rate up, letting it come back down and rest. It's kind of more work related. Whether it's a farmer's walk, carrying the kettlebells back and forth, it's you know, carrying your groceries in the house, basically, or anything like that. I was still kind of joking to carry one of those buckets of paint on Lowe's. You know, back to your car, and then you got to twist with it and stuff. So when we do like the lunges and rotating, there's a reason we're doing that rotation because how many times you're taking things out of the buggy and you're lifting things up here. And if you're not able to do that, and this is where a lot of people tweak their back. You hear like, oh, I'm sitting in my chair and I went to reach something on the file cabinet and I heard this, you know, pop or something, and then they're you know bent over and their backs hurt. It's just, they might be strong and in good shape, it's just their body's not conditioned to do that and get that torque on there. So, we try to train functionally to, to improve those things. That being said, those things happen. It happens to everybody. You know, you bend down and put a sock on one day, and next thing you know, you hear that little pop, and you're like, it's not good, it's gonna hurt me a little bit. Um, it, it happens, but we try to, to train that so those things don't happen. Plus, I think training functionally is more fun than standing there doing some bicep curls and doing some like lifts. And, you know, so we get up, get moving around. We all sit all day long for the most part, and um, and that's kind of the next thing. We have this poor posture from from sitting, where our shoulders are kind of slumped forward, our hips are rolled under. Our most people tend to sit with their legs in a little bit, and then they're on their computer just with the arms up. And you know, the we have this horrible posture. So we want to try to get you up, get you, you know, standing up tall again. That's going to take some of the stress that we feel in our low back and up, up in here. We all tend to carry our stress up here. So if we can get those shoulders to just kind of relax down, that's going to release some of that stuff that's up in there too. So, and this all kind of helps in with that a little bit. So, all right. Number five. This is one of the newest things that that we're seeing, and we've seen it for a little bit, and there's just some research that is about, about a month ago that just came out of this. But basically, a less is more approach. And we're just programmed to, if I want to lose, lose 10 pounds, I need to go to the gym every day, and I need to work harder and harder and harder and harder and harder, and just keep pushing, pushing myself to get that. If I hit a plateau, I need to work harder. That's going to bust me through that plateau. And the problem is, it's it's like a car. You're constantly putting that pedal down, and you're never letting off of it. And you're never putting any gas in there. Eventually, you run out, and your body gets to this point. It's got so much stress put on it from exercise, 
from work, from home responsibilities, from not getting enough sleep, from not eating well. We've got all these stresses put on the body. Eventually, it just goes, you know what? I'm not, I'm not even thinking about losing weight. I'm just shutting down on you. And what it tends to do is first you start feeling stiff or tight or you get a little ache in the hamstring or something like that. And it's, you're, it's just your body's way of telling you, like, hey, I want some rest. So I'm trying to give you a signal so you stop. A lot of people don't. They keep going and then eventually your body's like, you know what? You're not listening to me. Something's going to hurt. Get hurt. And then it gets hurt and it forces you to, to rest. So what we're seeing is if we cut back a little bit on exercise, and if there's days you come in and you're like, you know what, I just don't really feel like it today. And last time you did three sets or four sets or you got so many reps in 30 seconds or whatever, and you're there today and it's like, I just don't have it. Don't beat yourself up over that. Do the best you can. There's gonna be days where you're up here and there's gonna be days that you're down here. And some of those days, it's a, it's a command, do what you can, almost, hate to use it, go through the motions, but it's a go through the motions type workout. And if you, if you listen to that and do that, you're gonna, you'll usually feel better afterwards because you kind of took it easy, but you still got some movement, got some blood going, and you're like, you know what, I, I feel a little bit better now. But if you're, you're like, oh, you know what, it was 30 seconds, I got 10 reps the last time, I've gotta get 10 or 11, this time you're trying to do that, you, you come out and you're just shot. And then you notice, you know, you get home and you're walking up your steps and you're like, oh, why did I put a second floor on my house? And, and, you know, so, you know, it, it's stuff like that. So it's kind of listen to that. But I talked about the research, I mentioned the research a little bit. What they found is they looked at a strength training protocol and they had a group that did 30 minutes and a group that did 60 minutes. And what they um, did is they did equal basically exercises, but the sets were, the 60 minutes did more sets. And after, I think it was eight weeks that they did it for, or 12 weeks, somewhere in there. But anyhow, the 30-minute group lost 8.8 .8 pounds of fat, and the 60-minute group only lost 8.4 pounds of fat. Even though the 60-minute group had like almost twice the number of calories burned. So, looking at that, what that, they didn't, what that tells us is, Basically, I think because the body is so stressed and so many outside things that that exercise is just more stress. So we pull that back a little bit, this will work. We've kind of cut things back um, kind of as a result of that to about 45 minutes, or we're in the process of doing that actually. But the main reason for 45 over 30 is there wasn't a big warm up period on the 30 minutes. So we. Were, we, we want to get some warm-up stuff in there, get that joint range of motion, things like that, because that is beneficial and that's not taxing your body, oh, overly taxing your body. You know, that stuff usually feels good. So, so the, I want to rock your jeans challenge. The whole goal is one to two sizes over the next eight weeks. Um, we officially start Monday. Um, I would suggest everybody starts eating better now. <laughs> if you need one last hurrah, this is your weekend for it. Because um, Monday morning, everybody's got to be on. <laughs> but um, it'll end November 17th, which is a Saturday right before Thanksgiving. And like I said, it's the third year we've run this. We always finish up that week before Thanksgiving because basically once Thanksgiving comes, that's the official eating season for the next month. Um, with party after party and stuff like that. So we want to try to get you down and then once we get there, the goal basically from November 17th until January 1st or 2nd or 3rd, um, we just want to try to maintain right in there, maybe come up a pound or two, you know, we'll, we'll give you that, but let's, we want to try to maintain that. Um, and over that month we usually do something fun holiday hold them or something like that we have objectives for you to do each, each day but we'll get to that in, in December so like I said the goal is one to two jean sizes um, some of you have already brought brought your jeans in and we've taken your picture trying to get them buttoned um, like I said we're just taking pictures from like the waist down the last picture we'll take with your whole body
everyone happy in their teams. <laughs> so, um, want to make sure that they just can't get buttoned. That's that's the main thing there. Um, we're going to do a few group workouts through over the eight weeks. One of them is this Saturday. We'll also have some progress meetings going through where we come in, we try um, the jeans on, see how they're fitting, answer some questions. Hey, you know, what are you guys doing well? What are you guys having trouble with? And this isn't just for you know, myself, Tammy, Courtney, to just answer questions. It's a chance for you guys to kind of all help each other too because sometimes somebody may be having the same problem and they overcame it or found something else that works and, you know, we don't think of it, we don't know, you know, something like that. So that, that helps a little bit too. Um, so that's kind of the whole, um, how the whole challenge works with that. You get into your jeans, um, everyone that gets into them, we can give you a $50 gift card to go get a new pair of jeans. Or to use them or to get a new pair of jeans. So, or to use Christmas shopping or whatever you, <laughs> you want to. Um, so, um, basically, like I said, one, one to two sizes down from these next, next eight weeks. Um, and, Back to the progress states a little bit. The reason we do the progress trial is about three weeks. A lot of you are going to come in and be like, I've gotten on the scale and my weight hasn't changed yet. That's normal. <laughs> it, that'll come. What, what, what's happening is, is because most of you have all been working out, but we're going to bump that volume up a little bit. And what that's going to do is we're going to add a little bit of muscle tissue. Also, you're going to start eating better. So you're going to start giving your body better nutrients to build some muscle tissue. And it's going to be like, hey, this, this is great. I've got some good nutrients in here. I can you know, get that metabolism up. So at, as you're losing that fat, that muscle is coming up. So that scale is kind of staying the same. Um, so we're going to try them on. And then you're like, hey, they're not buttoned, but they're, they're closer. Um, and then about... Six weeks in, we'll try one again. They might be almost buttoned or buttoned but not comfortable. And then week eight, they're buttoned. As, and as long as we get them buttoned, that's all we're looking we're looking for. So you um, don't care if we can't sit down. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we want you to sit down. But <laughs> yeah. um, as long as we get them buttoned, that's, that's the main thing. So, um, so like I said. The progress dates, they are um, on the last page there. We're going to do um, Thursday, October 11th, just at, at 7.30. So again, if you come to the group um, class that night, we'll just have everybody try them on afterwards. Same thing on Thursday, November 1st. And then the last one will be on the finale on that Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. The group workouts that we're doing, we're going to do the first one this Saturday, kind of as a kickoff. We're planning on, with all of these, weather depending, we want to go out in the parking lot and do them out there. Just do some different things that we don't always do in here. I mean, some of the stuff we do, but just get outside, enjoy the weather. Right now, they're calling for rain on Saturday. <laughs> so, if it rains, um, bring your raincoat. No, we'll, we'll, um, we'll bring everybody inside. Um, and November 17th, let's hope there's not snow yet, but if there is snow, will be inside. So, um, basically, um, right now what we have is we're going to get everybody's name. We have some stuff to raffle off and um, have some prizes and some things to take home. Right. So, thank you all for coming again. So, Tammy's going to get that stuff and we'll get your names and we'll just do a, we have about six or seven things to raffle off. Okay. And if anybody has questions, you guys can start shooting them now. How many times are you recommending that we come? Each week, ideally four. Um, we're gonna, we'd like to see two that are strength. And everybody has, you may not have picked it up, but everybody has a strength workout that we put together for them. We used to post workouts of the month on the board, and what was happening is we were changing everybody's stuff anyhow. So we started just giving everybody a workout that has that on there. So. You at least have that. If you're doing coaching or any of the other memberships, you have a more specific workout with that. Stick stick with those. Those are going to be what you guys are looking for um, with that. So we want two of those, and then we want to get into two of the um, group classes. These would be the gray shaded boxes on the sheet up there. Um, this is with your registration fee. Dude, if you, 
uh, the group classes, if you're not on that group membership, they're all included in with that as well. Um, and then the biggest thing is going to be eating uh, well. So, um, any other questions? It's going to be easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, correct that again. Of, of the four, two should be group that Two we'd like to see group, see group, because that's a metabolic workout. Okay. Um, and then two be in strength, which is going to be a little bit more weight based. Um, and that would be a workout that, um, like, small group falls uh -huh. into that. Small group is which one? The weight? It's strength. Or the strength is strength. It's strength. That's the yellow shaded ones on there. So that, about, that would work. And what about your individual? Individual is strength, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there's also a workout program that we have, a workout sheet for you each month. Um, okay. Just pick up okay. the front desk from us, too. And that's, that's strength based, too. Okay. That's going to give you the ideal scenario. That being said, some people just don't like working out on their own or by themselves. If you're going to be more motivated in a group environment, by all means do that because you're going to work harder there than coming in and doing something on your own there too. So if you need you know, a session or a group session where somebody is, is pushing you and stuff like that to do it, do that. Um, so ideally, four to five would be at least two of them being necessary. Yeah, I would keep it to four and try to give yourself three days of rest in there. Just let your body recover there. Um, and what, what you'll notice, if you're getting four, say you've been doing five um, or six a week, you drop back to four, what you're going to notice is in those four sessions, you're going to be able to push harder because you're getting more rest. And again, that goes back to that intensity thing. If we can get more intensity, we're going to get better results there. And then our, we'll have that recovery time there. Because when you start going every day, your body gets a little bit tired and it can't push and work quite as hard. So, okay. Anybody else? Yes? Um, you said drink lots of water. Well, at school, I'm not able to have like water or that, so should I like get a note to say because all the water <laughs> in the mountains are warm and it's a different You want your water. teachers to be mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no, you'll be fine. I mean, if you get, if, drink like maybe a bottle of water before in the morning when you get up um, at lunch, have another water and then you know, have another one there. If you get a couple sips in the hall if you're changing classes and stuff, that's great. Um, because Everybody has restrictions, whether they're at work, they can't be drinking or you know, because they just don't have access to it, or they can't go to the bathroom all the time, or you know, whatever. So, at least want to make sure that you're drinking water. A lot of people will, will see that, like, yeah, I drink one glass a day, and that's it. Yeah, okay. um, what would you recommend? <laughs> Ideally, it's about half your body weight in ounces, it's kind of a general area. Use kind of your thirst indicator. If you're only drinking like one glass a day, you're not going to be thirsty because your body's just adapted to that. But, um, you know, if you are, you know, slowly scale that up a little bit. Don't go from one glass to eight um, because you're going to feel really bloated and you're going to be in the bathroom for 20 minutes um, until you get used to that. The eight glasses a day thing, is there's really not a lot of validity to it. It was... Um, they took how many, basically, um, ounces of fluid are in your body, how much gets respirated off each day, that's how much you should drink. And they never, this is back like 1905 or something like that, they did this, and they never took into consideration that there's water in the vegetables you eat, the food you eat, all this stuff, and a lot of your daily water needs get filled just through your food. Um, so, but that... 8 a.m. class has stuck for over 100 years. Um, so, but you just want to make sure you're drinking enough. A little bit. Coffee's, you know, does count. Um, teas count. Stuff like that. Even so, even they're not supposed to. It is still fluid. It counts. So, but um, yeah. Anybody else? All right. Let's do some raffle some stuff off and Tammy and Courtney are going to take care of that. Do you have that ready Tammy? Thank you.